Hey friends, it's Akidaris. So a lot of you guys know that I live in Japan, right? And now it's been a little over three years that I've lived here. And during that time, I have really tried to apply myself to learn Japanese as much as I can. Whether that is making friends that speak Japanese or consuming Japanese media, you know, it even came to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm learning all this Japanese, but I find myself saying every day, oh, I came out with this video recently that I was actually a student at Japanese school for 90 days at Yokohama Design College and it was an amazing experience. If you guys want to see what it's like going to school in Japan, feel free to go check that out. But if you did see it, in the middle of that video I mentioned that I have a lot of different methods outside of school that I use to learn Japanese. But but I literally have so many that it's gonna be its own video. This is just what I use and this video isn't sponsored. So any books, any apps that I share in here is from personal experience. So without further ado, I'm gonna get right into it with the books. So if you guys have ever taken a language course in Japan, you have probably stumbled across one, if not both of these textbooks. Mina no Nihongo and Kanji Look and Learn. I'm gonna break this down for you. These were my two best friends at the school my whole term. So I'm gonna dive into this book, Mina no Nihongo. This is completely in Japanese. There is no English in it whatsoever. I would highly recommend from one language learner to the other, try to learn hiragana and katakana. If you nail that down, your life will be so much easier. Also, learning basic sentence structures ahead of time will be really good. Mina no Nihongo is good when I feel that you're ready to throw your yourself into a full Japanese situation. This is also perfect for, I guess, the environment that I was in, which was a full Japanese school with no English, with just a Japanese speaking teacher. The next book, Kanji Look and Learn. Again, I can't stress this enough. Learning hiragana and katakana ahead of time is going to save you a lot of stress because kanji will be the enemy and best friend of your entire life learning Japanese. And Kanji Look and Learn has 512 kanji with illustrations. This is really good trying to help you remember a lot of kanji, practicing a lot of kanji. It starts off really basic from one to 10, then it goes into the days of the week, and then a lot of other basic kanji that eventually just build up a little bit more complex as you go along. Take this book as like kind of a kickoff into kanji. So these next books I'm gonna show you, I personally used while I was self-teaching myself, but a lot of universities and colleges use this one and it's called Genki. In fact, I have this edition and I have the second edition. This is really good if you speak English and if you really need a sentence broken down for you as to the how, what, why, and so of course this has Japanese in it, but the explanations and all the questions are in English. They will really help you to truly understand how a sentence is broken down in Japanese. This next book I'm gonna show you is something that I used while I was being taught Japanese by a friend of mine, and that is Nihongo Fun and Easy. I actually have two of them. So these have a lot of tests in them, and it's also in English as well. These are basically like Genki if they were like just workbooks and if they were condensed a lot smaller. So this is really good if you wanna like brush up on your Japanese, test yourself, making sure that you should use this kind of like on top of any other current textbook that you're using. So that was it for my recommendation for textbooks, but I also wanna show you guys some textbooks that I borrowed from a friend. This is for me to study for the Japanese language proficiency exam, which is also called the JLPT. There are five levels to the JLPT, N5, 4, 3, 2, and one being the hardest. Your girl is skipping N5 and just going straight to N4. This was a recommendation by all my teachers and all my friends at school. And also N5 is not taken seriously enough. So N4 is really gonna put me to the test. So wish me luck. So next is apps. So a lot of people were wondering what apps I use to study Japanese. And I have honestly way too many. So I condensed it down to some of the more useful ones. So I'm gonna start off with the first ones I ever used, which was literally called Japanese and Kanji. So these work a lot like Duolingo, where it's kind of like that trivia style. And it's good to try and help yourself recognize certain kanji and recognizing certain sentences. Don't think that you're gonna get fluent from those. I would highly suggest that you use those kinds of apps on top 
of whatever you're learning. Considering I went pretty hard on studying, I very rarely ever use those apps. The next app I wanna to recommend to you guys is called Write Japanese. So this is something that I don't really use, but I wanted to share it for those of you that are trying to learn hiragana and katakana. And this is really good because it teaches you how to write, it teaches you stroke order, and it keeps making you repeat the hiragana and katakana until it feels that you have memorized it enough. So it's kind of like a notebook slash kind of flashcard-esque type of app that is really good for those of you trying to start into hiragana and katakana. Okay, so the next app I wanna talk about is called Kanji Garden. I quickly showed this in my school video and a lot of you were like what is that app it's called kanji garden and i think it's really good to try and memorize kanji and to brush up on what you probably already know be careful when using this app because it's very easy to try and force yourself to learn as much kanji as possible it's not gonna happen <laughs> trust me i have done this many times where i tried to like be like i'm gonna learn like 15 kanji today nope it didn't happen. So just take it very slow with this one. Basically, you test yourself on kanji and anything that you haven't gotten right, then the app will comprise all of those kanji and put it into a new test and give that back to you and be like, okay, you didn't get these kanji right, so let's do it again. Moving on now, I'm going to introduce you guys to two apps that are really good for those of you that are serious learners in Japanese, who already have the sentence structures down, who want to be more versatile and understand reading and comprehension. And these apps are called Todai Easy Japanese and Satori Reader. These both pretty much work the same way, but Todai Easy Japanese is basically news articles. It's essentially NHK. You can read the news, but in Japanese and you can also set it to whatever level that you're at but basically what it will do is if you're on Todai Easy Japanese it will have the news article in front of you and you can tap certain words and vocabulary and you will get a breakdown of what that word is what it means in that context and then you can just slowly read it to yourself Satori Reader is an app that also has a lot of different stories in it that work the same way you can also change the settings according to what your Japanese level is at and this is really good if you want to also read along with a native speaker because it also comes with audio. So this is a big plus when learning Japanese. Uh, this is if you really want to take it a step further. I'm just really bougie with this, um, but you don't have to get these, but it really helps. Okay, so that pretty much covers it for the books and the app section of this, but now I'm gonna dive into more methods that I use to study Japanese. So getting right into it, I want to share an app that I kind of go on and off with that I think a lot of people have used in their life called Hello Talk. And again, I'm not sponsored, but you may have seen this being mentioned in a lot of other YouTube videos. I legit think that HelloTalk is a good site because it's a social media app for language learners. And it's good because you can make captions, you can make posts, post photos, message, you can even call people and practice the language. And whenever you make a post or someone else makes a post, you can correct their post and it will show their original post, show the corrections that you made and why this is correct. And again, you can call them. I've called a few people. Luckily, they had no idea who I was. One thing I don't like about HelloTalk is that some people strictly go on it for dating and I'm just like, I don't want to date, I'm just, I just want to learn the language. So moving on, I wanna talk about a website that I used to use before school called italki. This is also an app that you can get on your phone. And basically italki is really good for those of you that cannot afford the time or the money to go to a proper school. So if you go on italki, you set your language in this case to Japanese, and you will be given a catalog of native speakers and professors and tutors that are willing to sit down and teach you the language. And all of them have different prices per hour. I think on average, my tutors were about like 20 bucks an hour, something like that. And I would see them about once or twice a week. And it was really effective. So I think that's really good, especially if you want to work from home. A lot of it is discipline. You got to have the time to talk to them and keep studying even after your lesson. That's one of the biggest things, no matter what method you use, whether you're going to school or whether you have a private tutor or you're self-teaching yourself, apply everything you learn and just immediately start using it. Look, learning Japanese or any language, it's climbing mountains you know and when you look at Japanese sometimes it feels like you're looking out to the ocean and all you have is some flippers on you but just think about the end of what all of this will be worth all the anime that you're going to be able to watch without subtitles all the people that you're going to make jealous because you can read all this kanji and being able to go around Japan without having to say well really without having to play charades and I know I'm not fluent I am nowhere near fluent but I got over the first obstacle, which is confidence. And I think my Japanese honestly has gotten 
a lot better. Feels like somebody just, I don't know, just switched something in my brain and all of a sudden I can hear everyone. It feels so good and I'm so excited for just seeing where my Japanese level is gonna be at in the future. But I don't wanna get too long into this because this video is already long enough as it is, but I appreciate you guys for watching. Um, if you guys have any more recommendations for fellow language learners, including myself, feel free to put it in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more content and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.